What's up girls? Raj here, back with another video. In this video, we are going to compare application load balancer versus API gateway. We'll start with introduction to each of the service and then we are going to dive deep comparing each other, their feature differences, pros, cons, and also the price differences. And then we are going to end the video with a conclusion. As always, timestamps are given in the description. Also, please let me know what you thought of this video. Or if you have any questions, put it down in the comment section. Uh, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, it really makes me look like a better YouTuber than I am. And it really, really helps the channel. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the video. So what is uh, application load balancer? Uh, it automatically distributes incoming traffic across uh, multiple backend targets. Uh, ALB is a layer 7 load balancer, so it works on the application layer. The underlying infrastructure is managed by AWS. The underlying infrastructure is highly available and elastic, so if the traffic uh, goes up, your load balancer should scale up as well to accommodate the increased rate of traffic. So some typical ALB integration would be your website, uh, sending requests to the application load balancer and you will configure different route in the load balancer So if the incoming path has slash browse or slash insert, maybe they will forward to uh, Target groups with AWS Lambda if the path has slash delete then they're gonna forward to AWS EC2 Okay, moving on to API gateway API gateway is fully managed and serverless API service from AWS this also automatically scales up and down with traffic and also for API Gateway, infrastructure is managed by AWS. It is highly available and it is also elastic. Uh, so a typical pattern of API Gateway integration will be your website uh, calling different APIs. All those APIs will be hosted in Amazon API Gateway and for different HTTP methods such as slash get, slash post, slash delete, it can go to different Lambda or AWS EC2 endpoints. So which brings us to the topic of today's discussion is what is difference between ALB and API Gateway? Uh, all right, so let's take a look. So for API Gateway, you can implement uh, rate limiting, bursting for APIs. Uh, if you want to control like, hey, uh, this client can only call these APIs uh, 10,000 times a month. Uh, with this much burst limit, you can do all that for API Gateway. ALB doesn't offer any such feature. So even though the next point is not a difference, but I wanted to mention it because it's the important one, uh, both API Gateway and uh, Application Load Balancer integrate with AWS Web Application Firewall for protection out of the box. You just have to click a button, that's it. API Gateway uh, it is not possible to get a static IP address uh, for endpoint. You will always have the URL. Uh, ALB, it is possible to get a static IP address uh, for load balancer endpoint uh, using a global accelerator. API Gateway only accepts HTTPS traffic. ALB accepts both HTTP and HTTPS traffic. API Gateway, this is a big feature of API Gateway. Uh, it is able to do request validation, request response mapping. Uh, you use a template called Apache Velocity template, and you could check if some particular fields are present uh, in the input API request. And if, let's say, uh, you are expecting a field called account number in the input API request, and if it is not there, you can reject it straight away from uh, API Gateway. You do not have to go to the back end and code all that stuff. Similarly, for request response mapping, uh, let's say uh, some particular value is coming in a uh, field and then you want to uh, move it to a different field before you send it to backend, you could do that. Uh, for example, let's say a get API is sending an account number in a field called account underscore number, but the backend is expecting the field to be ACCTNO. So you could do that. You can move the value from that account underscore number field to SCCT and all before you uh, call the backend. Uh, not able to do that in application load balancer. So API Gateway able to handle spiky traffic. So both can auto scale up and scale down. That's not a problem. Uh, but if the traffic goes up super fast, uh, API Gateway is little faster to respond because the nature, uh, nature of the underlying infrastructure 
the default rate is uh, 10,000 RPS rate per second, and it can uh, immediately allocate up to 5,000 uh, burst rate. ALB, if the traffic is super spiky, uh, there could be a little delay. However, you can pre-allocate LCUs. We're gonna take a look at the LCUs. This is like the capacity unit for ALB. It's like you can pre-warm underlying EC2s uh, for ALBs. And then even when the traffic spikes, you won't face a delay. However, you have to pay extra for this because you are keeping things pre-warmed. Uh, next, API Gateway, able to integrate with uh, Lambda. I'm just showing it for one. Um, Service, it is able to integrate with Lambda from different region, even different AWS accounts. So if you have your Lambda in a different AWS account, but your API gateway in another account, your API will be able to integrate with that Lambda. ALB is a regional service. Uh, so even within an account, ALB can only talk to uh, services, the backend services, let's say Lambda or EC2 uh, running within that region. I don't be able to go cross region and cross account. So going next, API Gateway, you can able to export, import APIs uh, from cross API platforms using Swagger or, or Open API Spec 3. Uh, so basically this is very, very popular. Uh, let's say you are running your API today in uh, Apigee, right? Or some other API platform like Kong API, MuleSoft, etc., And you want to test out API Gateway. Uh, so you can export those APIs from those platforms using Swagger and you can import it in API Gateway and your API will be defined. Uh, very little uh, infrastructure as coding required. Similarly, if you don't want to get locked down in API Gateway, you can export out Swagger from API Gateway and then uh, define it in other API management platforms. LB, there is no direct method to import, export, rules for cloud platforms. Like if you have coded a bunch of routing rules in application load balancer, typically you will do that using uh, cloud formation. So if you want to move to another load balancer from another cloud or another company, uh, you probably you have to code that stuff again. You cannot just import export easily. API Gateway have extensive authentication and authorization, authn slash authz. Uh, integration, uh, so out of the box, it integrates with API key, IAM, Cognito user pool, Cognito identity pool, and external identity provider. Actually, this, this is like a little bit of confusing because of five different uh, methods. So if you want to take a look at this, I want to dive deep, I have a separate video talking about this. Uh, so I'm gonna put a link uh, up top, either this side or this side, uh, you can take a look. Uh, ALB, uh, it integrates with any YDC compliant uh, identity provider, such as Cognito, uh, LDAP, etc. Uh, but it doesn't have uh, integration with like API key because API key is API uh, concept. API Gateway, able to cache the responses. Um, so for a specific method, if you think it is gonna return repetitive value, you can cache it. LB, you are not able to cache any responses. Uh, API Gateway, however, the timeout limit for API execution is 30 seconds. And application load balancer, timeout limit is 4,000 seconds, so way longer timeout limit. API Gateway integrates with almost all AWS services. If you go to API Gateway Console, uh, click the backend integration, you will see a lot of AWS services in there. LB integrates with EC2s, lambdas, and IP addresses as backend. It cannot integrate directly with all different services that API Gateway can do. API Gateway, uh, there is no health check, like it's not gonna periodically go and check if the backend service is up and running. If you want to implement it, you have to do it yourself. Like uh, you can, let's say you have a, a Lambda as a backend, you can create a CloudWatch scheduled rule which is gonna go ping the Lambda and see if the responses are coming as expected. Uh, ALB, health check is available. It can ping the backend services and see if it is working okay. That's how it determines whether the target is healthy or not, right? Uh, if it is not healthy, it routes to a different target. So API Gateway is a serverless service. So what that means, it's, uh, it's pay per use. So if the API Gateway is idle, if there are no API traffic at all, uh, then you don't pay anything for API Gateway. 
unless you enable caching, then you pay for the caching capacity. But let's say you don't have caching enabled, then you don't pay anything for idle API gateway. ALB, think of it like a EC2. So uh, to run a application load balancer for you, underlying there is a EC2 uh, running. So you have to uh, pay for a charge even if uh, ALB is idle. So this calculation is a little bit uh, complicated. So I'm just gonna show you the pages and you can, you can take a look at it. Okay, so this is the page for Amazon API Gateway uh, pricing. You can just Google it, it will come up. Uh, so API Gateway has a generous uh, free tier. The free tier includes 1 million API calls received for REST APIs, 1 million API calls received for HTTP API, and there are some other stuff. Uh, so if you are trying to do a proof of concept, API Gateway will pr probably cover you in free tier. Uh, beyond that, so HTTP API is the new uh, flavor of API for API Gateway. I'm making another separate video on HTTP API, deep dive, demo, all that stuff. But if you are able to use HTTP API, always use HTTP API, no need to use REST API. Uh, so for HTTP API, the price is cheaper than REST API. You can see first 300 million after the free tier is uh, $1 per million and after 300 plus million for 90 cents per million. And HTTP API is metered in 512 kilobyte increments based on the payload. REST API a little bit more expensive. Uh, first 333 million, price is 350. And then uh, next 366667, price is 280. And then you can see the prices go down as the volume goes up. The caching is only available for REST API, but you can see depending on the amount of caching you allocate, uh, the price changes. Uh, but again, if you can use HTTP API, you should always use HTTP API. Okay, now going back to uh, load balancing. So load balancing pricing is a little bit more uh, complex. Uh, so there are three different load balancers that AWS offers, application load balancer, network load balancer, and classic. So we are talking about the application load balancer. Uh, so you could see it has two components to it. One is uh, 0.0225 per application load balancer hour or partial hour and 0 0.008 per LCU hour. So then it goes into detail on what is LCU. So LCU is measured by new connections, active connections, uh, process bytes, rule evaluation. So it's not really that straightforward. And then you can go down and there is a pricing example. Uh, so this is the rule of thumb. Do not think that one solution is cheaper than the other. If your uh, workload is uh, spiky and then idle uh, for a long time, API Gateway will probably come out cheaper. But if you are using consistently high volume, uh, the pricing may differ, like ALB might be cheaper. But you gotta do that calculation. So don't assume that uh, ALB will be always be cheaper or API Gateway will always be cheaper. So as you can see, it's not a simple, straightforward ALB or API Gateway decision. Uh, it will vary based on your use case. Uh, so depending on your project and application, uh, check what features you need, go through the lists, do the price calculation uh, based on the nature of the traffic of your application, and then decide. All right, if you like the video, please click the like button, smash it. If that's something you are into, uh, subscribe, and again, please comment. Uh, it really helps this channel grow. Also, I have created a Facebook page where I share upcoming videos, uh, behind the scenes pictures, and occasionally picture of my dog. Um, all right, that's the video guys and girls. Hopefully you guys and girls enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye